Welcome back to First Take. No Giannis, no problem. Last night, the Milwaukee Bucks took their sixth straight dub with a 113 to 106 win over the Clippers as Atentacumpo missed his third straight game with a left Achilles tendonitis. They've also been winning without Chris Middleton, who missed an 11th straight game with a sprained left ankle. Despite those absences, the Bucks are clicking right now, winning their last six games after starting three and seven under Doc Rivers. They're holding opponents under 100 points per game during the break and winning by almost 17 points per game. JJ is back with us, and I'm going to start with you on this one. Who is more likely to reach the finals, the Bucks or the Clippers? Well, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. Both these teams can reach the finals. I want to be clear on that. Okay. They okay. both can. Right. But the question is more likely. So, yep. for me, it's the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, and, and here's why. They are the second best team in the Eastern Conference. Particularly when you look at the rest of the teams in the Eastern Conference, and, and really some question marks, particularly as it pertains to health. Donovan Mitchell, uh, it was reported he just got PRP done on his knee yep. for the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Knicks are banged up. I, I think if they're healthy and in rhythm, they can be a contender in the East, but they're banged up. So there's question marks about them. There's question marks about the Philadelphia 76ers, of course, because they don't have Joel Embiid. Milwaukee, or uh, I'm sorry, Miami has never really looked consistent until lately. And, and we all know what the Miami Heat are capable of. I still think when all teams are healthy in the Eastern Conference, the Bucks are the second best team. They've had, and, and we talked about it a, a couple weeks ago when I was on the show, even prior to this 6-0 streak, their defense has completely changed. It, it, it changed and was trending in the right direction. Last six games since the All-Star break, they're the number one defense in the league. And, and Stephen A., you asked me, well, what's different? And when I watched them play under Doc Rivers, they know what they're doing. There's buy-in to the schemes. And it's little things. It's communication. It's uh, help side positioning. It's Brooke Lopez defending the rim. It's lim limiting blow-bys. That's something I brought up last time. Patrick Beverly has been a great addition to them. Think about the game last night. Him, Bobby Portis leading that comeback. The emotion. Like, all of, all of a sudden now, the Bucks have an identity. The pieces fit. The other thing I brought up two weeks ago, the offense was trending in the wrong direction. Damian Lillard went into All-Star break on a cold streak, 29% over the last nine or 10 games going into the All-Star break from three. He's shot over 40% since the All-Star break. So now you've got the offense clicking, you've got the defense clicking. They look like a true contender. I still think the Clippers are a true contender, but as I mentioned in the first block, there's just too many good teams right now in the Western Conference, and you go uh, matchup by matchup, you could talk me into anything happening out in the West. Well, first things first, breaking news. I mean, you were nice and you were calm and you had a smile on your face when you were talking about Doc Rivers and the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, I mean, that's good, that's good, that's good. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, with you. I'm just messing with you, JJ. I just met you a first take, baby. You know I'm going to let that slide. <laughs> You know I'm going to let that slide, JJ. You know I'm going to do that. But anyway, seriously, seriously, the bottom line is this. I disagree with you. Here's the only reason I disagree with you. Because the Boston Celtics look that special. I think that there's a closer gap from the Clippers to the Nuggets than there is from Milwaukee to Boston. That's the only reason I'm disagreeing with you. I agree with everything you've said about Milwaukee. I get all your points. It's just that I'm watching Boston right now. 11-game winning streak, Jason Tatum. He's my favorite, by the way. He's my favorite for league MVP at this particular moment in time. Best player on the best team in the league, et cetera. Jalen Brown doing his thing. Chris Porzingis doesn't even play when they blow out the Golden State Warriors on Sunday afternoon. 45 points in the first half. You have to explain that one to me. I understand 45-point loss. I understand 52-point loss. I don't understand how you could be down by 45 in the first half. I mean, I, that just that's just a subject that we'll have to tackle another day. I just didn't understand it. But in the end, I'm looking at what they do. Top three defensively and offensively in terms of efficiency. You know what they can do from three-point range. Not just percentage-wise. You know they're going to jack up threes, even though they dialed it back from about 44 to about 42 and a half now. I'm just looking at the Boston Celtics, and I'm looking at how lethal they appear to be. And I just think that there's a wider gap. When I look at the Los Angeles Clippers, I didn't like what I saw at J.J. Shea Shea. I didn't like what I saw against the Lakers. And I get that. And, of course, they've been struggling a little bit as of late. Just lost a... a Okay, see if I remember correctly, but I'm just looking mm -hmm. at, 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 I'm looking, I'm saying if Harden shows up, and obviously there's some ifs because Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, are they going to be healthy? I mean, that's a question mark. But, J.J., I have to tell you this because, remember, I want you to use this. I want you to use that. I know you don't like mentioning the first take too much when you're covering those games, but I want you to do this. You and, and Doris and Breed. I 
the new microwave. Vinny the Microwave Johnson from the, from the Detroit Pistons. Uh, of course I know who he is. Norman Powell. Yeah. This brother, off the bench, he's something else. I love this kid. He's like, I, I'm just telling you right now, he's like instant offense to me. I look at him and I see him as a huge factor for the Clippers come playoff time. I'm not saying they're going to beat Denver because I ain't betting against Denver in the West, but I'm telling you right now, I think there is a closer gap. There's a there's a there's a there's a shorter gap from the Clippers to the Nuggets than there is from Milwaukee to Boston right now. Steven, I'm gonna have to disagree with you. For the first time in first take history, JJ Reddick and I agree on this topic. I agree. <laughs> I think it's the Milwaukee. I think it's the Milwaukee Bucks. And let me tell you why. And I think it might be a blessing in disguise that okay. Giannis is out. And Dame is able to find his game. So now you pair that with what Dame is doing since the All-Star break, and you bring Giannis back, and we know what Giannis represents. They're gonna be and see, I don't really trust the I don't trust the Celtics as much as you guys do, because I saw them in the playoffs last year. I saw what they did. I saw them give it up at home. And when you want to say Jason Tatum, but they shouldn't even have been in that situation. You and I both know that, Stephen and JJ. They should have never been, had to get to a game seven had they taken care of the business. Had leads, and Miami walked them down every single, basically every single game that they had a lead and end up winning those games. But I like the way Dame has played. I love Bobby Porter's last night. And you see what la last night it looked like to me over the last five minutes, Milwaukee jumped into a zone. What, what uh, the Clippers have is three great ISO players. Kawhi can go get his own shot. Paul George can get his own shot. And we know hard what Harden can do. Now, all of a sudden, you force them to make shots. Don't let them beat you off. The, like you said, JJ, they didn't get beat off the dribble a bunch. So now when you bring him back, if this Dame Lillard, I'm not saying he needs to give you 40, but if this Dame Lillard that we saw last night and he shows up with Giannis, because I know Bobby Portis is going to be consistent. He's a double-double. He's going to give you that every game. They, they absolutely, absolutely 1,000% can beat Boston in a seven-game series. So I like them. I like the Bucs. I'm, I'm glad we agreed, uh, Shannon. Because you. <laughs> First of all, I apologize for interrupting you in the A block. L let me say this. You're in Dallas remotely in your Brioni suit, all right? And, and the only reason... I would let you talk. The only reason I, I, I felt like you were putting words in my mouth, so I, I wanted to clarify before you did your full point, and okay. I apologize for interrupting. Okay, it's a, it's not a, we good. It's not a very, it's not a very becoming behavior, Mike. Oh, I want to actually, I want to, I want. Well, you never apologize to me. I will never <laughs> apologize to you. I want to actually, I want to ask, I want to ask you guys something actually, because yes. I, I know you kind of yes. talked yes. about this last yesterday, and sure. I watched some of the clips from yesterday uh, uh, when I was when I was on YouTube last night. Okay, but you bring up. The, the Celtics in the playoffs last year, mm -hmm. there was no Kristaps Porzingis. To That's me, true. he is the cheat code. Okay. Joe Mazzulla and I, we sat down in September. I interviewed him. One of the things he talked about was like having a curveball, particularly in the playoffs. To me, Kristaps Porzingis is the curveball. He's the guy, when teams go to switching lineups, he can, he can punish mismatches. He's the guy, if teams want to go big, yes. he can go spot up at 27 feet. The other under-talked-about thing, and this is not a knock on Marcus Smart at all. This is not a knock. Marcus Smart helped build the identity of the Boston oh, Celtics. that's true. This version of the Boston Celtics. He was so key to their core. Better. Defensively, offensively, the way he played, his effort, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So key to it. So it's not a knock on, on Marcus Smart. But him being gone has allowed Derek White to elevate his game. Derek White and Kristaps Porzingis, you talk about the Celtics last year, they didn't have this version of Derek White last year, and they didn't have Kristaps Porzingis. So my question to both of yeah, you, because he, he, you brought up something. So, okay. Do you, got, you brought up the gap between the Celtics and the Bucs. The reason I said the Bucs, because I think the Bucs are more, more likely to get to the conference finals, not saying the Clippers can't. I'm just talking about – the state of the Western fair, Conference fair, versus the fair. state of the Eastern Conference. Fair. Now, all of a sudden, you've only got to win one series. My question to you two is the gap created now between the Celtics and the rest of the NBA. I, th I, I want to say yesterday you guys talked and about this a little bit. I want to, The Nuggets are really the only team, it sounds like, correct. that you feel that's like are said. in the same tier as the Boston that Celtics. Is, that is what I said. I said that that's the only team that was on the same tier. And I'll let An uh, Shannon answer the question. But go ahead, Shannon, because I got a question for J.J. as well. But go ahead. I did. And that was a discussion yesterday. But even with that being said, I still think Boston is a notch above 
the Denver Nuggets. And I know Denver went to Boston and beat them in a close ball game, but the way they're playing now, J.J., and I use the analogy, uh, uh, Christoph Brzingis is like adding a couple of drops uh, to my cognac, Shea by Laportier. It opens it up. <laughs> and what he's been allowed to, what he's been able to do, he's allowed Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to expand their game. They have more space because, as you mentioned, he can drop, he can jump out to 25 feet and drain a three. But then you put a six-five guy on him, he can punish him down low. So I do like what you're saying, but I still believe Dame and, and Giannis is going to be more than a handful for him. Only, only quick question I had was that you brought up Marcus, you know, you know Marcus, Mark, um, you said Marcus Smart, right? Yes. Him being yes. on. Yeah. What about Drew Holiday being there? Is that more of a factor Quickly. to Derek White looking over there? I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. I, I really believe that Joe Missoula and Drew Holiday were destined to work together. Okay. I believe that.